Hey everybody, welcome back. Steve Basic Architect here for the Build Show Network. We're back out on the job site. Green Logic's doing a great job. It just so happens, guess what we're going to talk about? Some Green Logic today. We're going to put Logic and the color of green. We're going to mix it together and uh, we're going to talk about insulating sheathing and weather resistive barriers, integrated weather resistive barriers, and why we would use those on the wall framing. And uh, we'll show some examples here. So actually we'll start out with, it's made by the zip system. It's called R sheathing. You can see here, it's nothing more than the 7 16 zip OSB that gets laminated to a poly ISO board. Now, in this case here, we have an inch and a half board. So this is their R9 board. They have a one inch insulation which is their R6, they have a half inch at R3, but they also have a two inch, which is a little larger than this, that is their R12 board. But basically what they've done, you know, in, in the past driving by buildings, you see they would do plywood or OSB and then they put a building paper on the outside, which is the weather resistant barrier or WRB we like to call it. And they put that up, but that's two trips around the building. Here, Zip System came up with a system that said, why don't we laminate or adhere the weather resistant barrier to our sheathing and then we can also add insulation to that. So I have a panel here that's doing a number of things, right? It's insulating, it's a shear panel, it's a structural panel. It gives me a nail base for siding and everything that I'm gonna exterior finishes that I'm gonna put on the outside. But most importantly, it has a weather resistant barrier that will then get taped, right, on the outside. Now, you can see we we moved inside because it started raining outside before we uh, started shooting the video, but you can see here, there's that R9 board. It's on the outside of our two by six wood frame, 24 inch on center, um, <clears throat> excuse me. On the outside, that weather resistive barrier comes across and you can see here, we line the window openings with zip. And then what we'll do is simply tape that outer face and come around. So not only do we have the integrated weather resistive barrier there, but we bring that air barrier and weather barrier into our window opening here and tape that up for continuity. So let's go back to the uh, studio. I'll break out some details and we'll talk a little bit further on uh, integrated weather resistant barriers and why would we want to use them. Hey everybody, welcome back to this studio, home of Big Red. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that out there. Green Logic Builders doing a hell of a job. Um, and it's for, uh, you know, one of, my, one of our veterans um, in the country. So giving them uh, a great home is always a great thing. Um, you know, being a veteran, I, you know, tons of friends that have been in there. This guy sacrificed an awful lot if you see what uh, they have to go through and uh, what they do to uh, protect our country. So hats off to them. They do a, a hell of a job and uh, deserve everything they get as far as I'm concerned. Anyways, <clears throat> we have a detail here. Let's dive in. We'll talk about uh, a couple of the primary factors on uh, why that Zip R9 is uh, working for you. So let's dive in. All right, everybody. So we have the water table detail here. And uh, you can see foundation wall. Did a great video where we talked about that mud sill there. Um, you can see here we do a uh, double mud sill here in New England. We try to get that extra inch and a half in our basement. Band joist here. And then uh, this is our floor sheathing. And then our wall above. And that wall, you see, has that um, stud cavity there. And, uh, you know, last week we uh, had a great discussion where we talked about the 24 inch on center wall framing and why would you do it and some of the advantages to doing it. But, um, yeah, today we're going to take it. Um, a little bit deeper and we're going to talk about that zip r9 on the outside you can see it there and then we have the 
7 16 inch OSB sits on the outside of there. So like I said in the video, you know, in days of past, we would frame the wall, we'd do wall sheathing, we'd wrap a, a building paper or a wrap around the wall. Um, but the gents at Huber and ladies, um, they came up with a great idea of integrating the weather resistive barrier, which is basically the uh, building paper, WRB, with the sheathing. And that gave us zip, right? And that zip board is basically, instead of going around the building twice, we go around the building one time. Now, that didn't provide any insulation. So what zip did is they took their levels of innovation even further and said, well, what if we do this, the WRB and the sheathing, and we take our zip and we take the zip and we add insulation. And then that equals zip R, right? So what is that doing for us, the zip R? Well, it's basically two major factors. There is one, there's the idea of continuous insulation, right? You love, you know how I love the word continuous. Well, if you followed along in last week's video, then when we talked about the 24 inches on center, you understood that every stud wall, you have a stud, a stud, and then you have the outside face of it. In this case here, we have the zip R9. And, uh, and then somewhere you might have a window. But basically you have three components to the wall system. You have the windows and doors. You have what I call the cavity, which is the space in between the studs. And then you have the opaque area. And it's the opaque area that this really helps battle. So if we didn't have the Zip R9 and we just had standard, say, plywood or OSB with a building paper on it, well, your cavity would be R21-ish. The opaque area would be roughly R5.8, something like that. It's in that ballpark. I mean, uh, but so you can see that the cavity is about three and a half times the R value of the opaque area. And the cavity area is, let's say that's 65% of the wall. The opaque area is maybe about, I don't know, 16% of the wall, somewhere in that ballpark. Again, you can go check out last week's video. I talk about that in depth. But the reality is, is that for a large percentage of our wall, that 16% um, and the 65, so that's 75, 81, that leaves us right around 19% for windows and doors, which that's a whole nother um, conversation, but those are R3. So you can see that for about 35% of the wall, we are less than R6, right? So if I come around and I put R9 on the outside of that wall, well, my cavity goes to R30, and my R5.8 goes to 11.8, right? Put it over here. So you can see that we effectively double that R value at the stud, right? We're even, yeah, or I'm sorry, it's R9, so that's R14.8. What was I doing? R6, it would have been 11.8, but yeah, R14.8. So we certainly have elevated that 16% of the wall. We've elevated the cavity by almost 30% to an R30 there. So you can see how this advantage to putting on this R9 in a continuous fashion certainly helps out the wall system there in elevating the R value. Now, the other beautiful things about this is, you know, zip and zip R, they make for a really good air barrier. 
right? If you saw my videos on control layers, you know that thermal values are number four on a list of four components, but air barrier is number two on that list. So if I can really seal this up well, not only do I have that enhanced thermal barrier, but I have a really good air barrier. And you saw in the video there how we took that zip and we turned it around the corner in all the window and door openings and lined them with that. So basically we took our WRB and folded it into all of our rough openings to give us that advantage of a continuous air barrier. Um, secondly, you know, in addition to the thermal enhancement of the uh, exterior wall frame, the insulating sheathing does another thing. If the insulating sheathing isn't there and we just simply put plywood on the wall, then this becomes my first condensing surface, meaning that sheathing, depending on its temperature, as moisture migrates through the wall, if it hits that sheathing and that sheathing's below dew point, then I'm going to form some condensation on that wall system. Now, if we can keep that moisture in the vapor form, then we don't have a problem. But the minute it condenses and we turn that vapor into a liquid form, now we have a water problem, right? Because it's liquid water and water kills. It kills buildings. So we don't want that. So how do we battle that? Well, one, we can put a really good vapor retarder on here, which in this case we did. We had a uh, the Sega Myrex and that's M-A-J-R-E-X, and you can see that in some of the other videos there that I've talked about it. We did it on the ceiling, we did it on the walls, but what that does is that limits the amount of vapor that gets into the wall, so it knocks it down a little and creates that uniform load, but it diffuses that uniform load so that you get less of a moisture load hitting that. So that's the first thing that we can do there. The second thing we can do is take this inside face and elevate the temperature. And how do we do that? Well, we know we have heating in here and in the winter it's cold out here. And we know that that heating it always moves from hot to cold. And so that energy is moving through the wall. Well, the longer I can keep that energy in and contain it, obviously the better system I have. So if I can take this insulating sheathing and slow down that thermal loss through here, then I create a much warmer surface on the outside of that stud on that first condensing surface there, right? So that any moisture that does get through the Myrex and comes to that surface will have an elevated temperature. And what that means is condensation is pretty much non-existent on the inside face of that insulating sheathing. So then I've ruled out the water problem and it won't kill my building. And that means it'll be a very, very durable system. So two things to summarize. One, insulating sheathing. It enhances the insulation and thermal value of the wall because it's placed in a continuous manner and it's placed in a continuous manner in such that it not only enhances the cavity, but it enhances all of the opaque area. We can't really put it over our windows and doors. We just have to make good decisions on the windows and doors. The second thing it does is it elevates that first condensing surface for moisture that we are limiting um, the intrusion of by using the Myrex there, but by keeping it from not condensating, we don't get water. And that's how we uh, build a successful energy efficient wall using the Zip R9 product. So, all right. Big Red, gone to bed. Poet didn't even know it.
You like that, don't you? Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, got a little bit of better understanding on how uh, some of these manufacturers are working hard to uh, provide us good building science solutions. So anyways, if you're looking for more, Steve Basic Architect on Instagram. You can find me there posting stuff regularly, um, trying to lift all boats in the harbor. So go check it out. If you're looking for even more, you can find me on the Unbuild It show. Um, that's where we do the Unbuild It podcast. It gets recorded. My good friends, uh, Jake and Peter, we uh, have a blast, but uh, we talk up everything building. So go check it out. And lastly, we have to have... It has to be close to a thousand videos on a Build Show Network. I know I, I have probably close to a hundred myself, so go check them out. A ton of free information there, um, stuff that we're doing every day. None of my videos are any archived footage. It's all stuff that we can go out to the job site and uh, shoot that video, come here into the studio and shoot it. So you're getting uh, solutions that we're making today. So go check out all my buddies. And uh, got to watch them seven times, right? That's what the sign says. But until next time, live from my studio. You can see, not a whole lot, just a curtain behind me. But anyway, live from my studio. Long live our buildings. <laughs>